Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another episode of Added Time. Today I want to be answering all of your questions that you sent in yesterday. But before we get into any of that, if you haven't already, I want to ask you to hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. But there is one more thing that we need to touch on before we do answer the questions and that is... Um, pay tribute to one of the most important figures in Chelsea's history because yesterday the sad tragic news came out that Peter Bonetti, Chelsea's legendary goalkeeper, sadly passed away due to a long-term illness. The tributes have been flooding in. Um, it was a pretty emotional day yesterday, I'm sure, for everyone connected to Chelsea, especially those that grew up watching Bonetti, um, of how much he means to so many Chelsea fans and to Chelsea as a football club. I just want to read you some of the things that were put up by Chelsea. Bonetti was a goalkeeping superstar of the 90s 1960s and 70s. He was the last line of defence during some of Chelsea's greatest games. The image of our injured goalie and his superhuman efforts to fought the opposition in a 1970 FA Cup final replay 15 years ago this month is one of the most heroic images of that famous match, one that captivated a record TV audience of over 28 million viewers in the UK. Benetti was not only a key figure in the FA Cup win in 1970, but also a European Cup Winners' Cup triumph a year later. In addition to those competition firsts for the club, Benetti was also in goal when we lifted a knockout cup for the first time, the League Cup in 1965. I think if you've gazed across social media, you realise how much Benetti means uh, to Chelsea and not only to Chelsea fans and to anyone connected with the club, but the tributes that have been flooding out from across the football world, um, I think show you how big of a figure Benetti was, not only for Chelsea, but for football. And um, it's a sad loss, it really is. And it's, you know, it's one of these things currently in the current situation um, that, you know, makes it even more tragic. But I think um, when you realise how big of an impact he's had, I think the tributes just show um, what he did and how much of a gentleman he was. There was a brilliant piece on The Guardian about Benetti. There was also a, a paragraph from a book that I think I'll post now. Um, um, when he was referenced as Chelsea's greatest ever goalkeeper, how humble he was to reject that claim and was giving praise to Petr Cech um, at the time. And um, I think it just shows you how much of a gentleman he was and how great of a character. So I wanted to pay tribute to him before we started today's video. So let's get into your questions that you kindly submitted. Firstly, here with Roy, uh, Ziash, Coutinho, Dembele, Tellez and Gabriel Maglahas only if one centre-backs leave. Would this be a good window? I think I'd have to be pleased with that window, really. You've sort of got all grounds covered there. A new right winger, uh, Dembele at striker, Tellez at left back, a new centre-back. I think that would please a lot of Chelsea fans. Whether that's realistic or not, in just terms of all those players for all those positions, I'm not entirely sure because we don't know not only Chelsea's business in a normal circumstances, but also how this current pandemic is going to affect the transfer window. But yes, to your question, that would be a good window. Caleb asks, after the unsuccessful spells of Shevchenko, Crespo and Higuain, should Chelsea still pursue a striker from Serie A, i.e. Lataro Martinez? I'm going to reject your claim that Hernan Crespo was unsuccessful at Chelsea. I made a video about this months ago that you can go and check out on the channel where I basically tried to debunk uh, this claim and myth that uh, Hernan Crespo was a failure at Chelsea. I think he was a brilliant signer for Chelsea. But I do get your point. Um... I don't think Serie A really comes into it. Look at Alvaro Morata and Fernando Torres. Two very different situations. Uh, Alvaro Morata coming from Real Madrid, from La Liga. Fernando Torres coming from Liverpool, where he thrived in the Premier League. I don't think you can pin Serie A as the common denominator here in regards to why strikers have failed at Chelsea down the years. Look at Matija Kesman as well as another example you could throw out. I think it's about the profile of the player. Was that player really necessary towards Chelsea at the current time? Was it a good signing? Was the timing right? Was was the right investment made? Was the right scouting done for certain players? I think Morata definitely comes down to that. Was he the right character for the Chelsea squad? All of these things come into play when you're signing a player. And I don't think that Serie A should deter Chelsea from signing any players, really. I don't think that's the key thing. Um, Martinez is going to be a big fee. I spoke about him yesterday on the channel. Um, but no, I, do, I don't feel that Serie A should um, really change uh, Chelsea's opinion on signing players. John Wick asks, brilliant name. Uh, you know how Ziyech and Promise had good chemistry and linked up well for Ajax. Do you think Ziyech and Pulisic will link up similar? And if so, do you think this is positive? Massive positive. If they could link up anything like you know, that goal that uh, Ziyech created for Promise, against us uh, at Stamford Bridge in November. If you could see uh, Pulisic anticipating runs like that, happy days. We know Pulisic has got really good anticipation. He really showed that and that highlighted during his great run in the Chelsea team earlier this season. And if he can continue that anticipation and uh, getting into the right place for goals, 
Uh, Chelsea are going to become a much more clinical team. This is something that Frank Lampard has been sort of uh, demanding from his players, from his wingers, the likes of Callum hudson odoi We've seen Raheem Sterling, how much, how many goals Raheem Sterling has scored for Manchester City, anticipating crosses, getting into the box. That's what he wants from his strikers and Pulisic was definitely offering that. But I agree with you, that would be a perfect scenario for Chelsea if Ziyech and Pulisic could create a great chemistry and create more great goals for Chelsea. Juho asks, who is your favourite Chelsea player of the current squad and why? It's between Ruben and Antonio Rudiger. Um, it's different, you know, Rudiger, I love Rudiger's character. I love what he's brought to Chelsea. I think he's been one of our best centre-backs in recent years. And uh, Ruben, just the story of him coming through the youth development and, you know, getting that chance under Sarri last year, he really came into his own. And I just love seeing Ruben come through. You know, Frank Lampard being my favourite player, I love seeing goal-scoring midfielders. And I think Ruben could potentially provide that for Chelsea and all the setbacks Ruben had and the struggles he's had. Um, so it's between those two. I'd maybe lean towards Ruben just because I think he's going to be here for longer than Rudiger and the fact you know coming through Chelsea's academy at such a difficult time to break into the first team he did it before Frank Lampard's youth revolution so I think that's uh, a key thing for me so I'm probably just going to edge it towards Ruben but I love Rudy as well Vishnu asks what is our best centre-back partnership if Gabriel Magla has signs and no one leaves that's a really difficult uh, question to answer um, when I made my predicted lineup for 2021 I didn't include a new centre-back because we really didn't know and you don't know if if Gabriel will be that player um, I'd say in terms of Defend. If I'm just going to go with defenders, in my opinion, performance levels of the season, I'd say it's either Tomori or Zuma because I think those two have performed the best out of Chelsea centre backs. But Andreas Christensen, you could throw in for a shout there. Ethan Ampadu, you know, we, we don't even know the 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 whole sort of element of Ethan Ampadu returning to Chelsea. We don't know what impact that's going to have and how Lampard is going to utilise him. And of course, we've got Rudiger as well. So um, I'm going to go for Kyra Tomori just based on performances this season. So that is it for the questions. Thank you guys so much for submitting yours. I'll be answering them once again next week. But thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Sun. Chelsea and I'll see you again.